All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, welcome to our first day of our USAS overview trainings. Um, we are doing it a little bit different this year than we have previously. So we kind of have a different setup. And um, here is our agenda. So uh, basically, in, in previous years, uh, what we did was we kind of went through all the different menu items. And what we want to do this year is focus on the different processes. So um, you can see here day one, that's where we are right now, is managing accounts. So I'm going to talk all things accounts today. Um, we're going to talk about the codes and how they're structured, a little bit about what they mean. Um, I'm going to talk about the account summary reports and then some account maintenance pieces in the software. So um, that's where we're at today. Tomorrow, Pat's going to talk through the expenditure process. Um, and all the different pieces there. And then um, on the last day, we'll talk about the receipt process. So let me go, let me show you where you can get the materials for today because we just updated a couple things. Um, here, let me get out of this one. I'm going to our SSDT wiki. And if we scroll all the way down here to the um, SSDT meetings and trainings, you can click right on this. And we have a link for this ITC overview training. So we've updated this. So we have the USPS section. Here's the materials from last week. And then USAS is right here. This is the agenda that I was just in. And then here is the PowerPoint. Um, now this is combined. It has everything for all days. Um, so this is the stuff that I'm gonna be um, starting with today is, is what we get into first here. Um, then uh, the additional um, slides for the next two days are in there. Um, I'm considering for our last day, we are definitely doing the receipts process. Um, we may hop back and do some of like the transaction reports at that point. Um, I'm talking about the account-based reports today. So I just kind of want to make sure that we fit everything all together here. So um, again, this is the first year we're doing it. So we're kind of figuring it out. Um, the other thing that I want to mention before we get started here is, um, oh, hang on a second, let me refresh this. Um, the other thing I want to mention here is that on the agenda, um, our plan really is to have this um, be something, again, in prior years, it was like a three-hour session every day. And if we don't need to do that, then we don't want to just like try and extend this out. Um, as I was going through my account section here, I do have quite a bit to talk about today, so I, I believe it will go past an hour and a half, um, maybe more like two hours. I understand, though, that your time is valuable. We are recording this entire thing, so at any point, you know, you have um, a commitment and need to hop out, I totally understand the recording will be posted after the fact as well. Um, but I mean, we'll try and do this efficiently as possible. Account codes are just like a huge beast that um, we will definitely see <laughs> how involved these can get. So, okay. Um, so let's kick it off here. Um, managing accounts. So again, I have kind of my bullet points for what we're talking about. Uh, let me hide this so we can actually see um, here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, and then also before I just completely dive in here is if you have questions along the way, absolutely feel free to let me know in the chat. I have that pulled up to the side here. Um, or if you want to unmute and ask a question, that is totally fine. Just let me know, um, you know, any questions or any more clarity on anything we talk about. Um, we can definitely do along the way. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay. So first, account codes um, and just accounts in general in the software, what are they used for? So they're used to define and organize the district's money. Um, it's used to group like expenses together and then tracking and reporting of expended and received amounts. So the first thing that we're going to jump into a bit more here is the account codes. And I know, especially if you are someone that's getting started in, you know, this software, um, we'll look at these account pages, but there's a lot of different codes and there's different code structures. So what um, we're going to kind of start talking about is how those help the district define and organize their funds. Um, you know, grouping like expenses together, that can be really helpful when they get to the part where they're 
um, getting together their reports. You know, sometimes there's different sorts and stuff that you're looking to have on a report and it is for a purpose and it all kind of comes back to those codes in a way. So um, tracking and reporting of the expenses and the received amounts, that's something um, we'll see these codes, you know, a lot of them are defined by the state um, and, you know, they may be to re represent like money that's come from the state or come from the federal level. And so they do specifically need to use certain codes so that when they're doing their reporting to their auditors, they have these things in the proper place. I tried to do this full screen so that we don't have to look at all the side list, but <laughs> I don't have the mechanics down yet, so forgive me. <laughs> so, okay. So then on this next slide, what we have um, is I have this introduction and it's from the USAS manual. So um, Uniform School Accounting System is what USAS stands for. Um, obviously, we're talking about our USAS software uh, primarily, um, but where those codes come from is they do actually come from a USAS manual that um, is from AOS that defines what each of those codes um, mean. And we're gonna be in that USAS manual today. So we have like RSSDT wiki that's for our USAS software, but when I say the USAS manual, I am going to be talking about that AOS manual that we'll be looking at. So this introduction is actually right from that USAS manual. And so I wanted to include this and I wanted to kind of read through this here. Um, and let me just make sure I have my notes in the correct spot as well. Okay, so um, the Uniform School Accounting System or USAS is based on the use of a combination of dimensions, different sets of codes, each of which supplies different elements of information. So um, once we start looking at these account codes and each different piece of them, this is something to keep in mind. By selecting the most appropriate code within each required dimension, each financial, financial transaction of the school district will be adequately identified. So we're gonna talk about these codes and we're gonna see them on reports, but keep in mind along the way that we're gonna see these used on the actual transactions, like one packets into um, the expenditure process tomorrow and defining like where something is being purchased from that ties back to um, this by selecting the most appropriate code, then I'll make sure it's um, accurately identified. Um, the use of certain dimensions to identify each type of financial transaction is the responsibility of management of the school district. The determination should consider the informational needs of the school district, um, ODE, and other regulatory agencies. Um, and then for various reasons, certain financial transactions should be coded in more detail than others. So this is important because as we go through, we're going to talk about every specific part of the account code and what they mean. But when you're actually looking in your district's instances, like not every single part of the code is always going to be defined. You know, sometimes they'll be left as zeros. And there's a lot of cases where that's okay. Um, we'll kind of see that the more that's defined in a code, the more detail it kind of includes it's defined down to. But um, ultimately, this is like up to the um, responsibility of management of the school district. So the treasurer's office, the treasurer. And each treasurer may kind of have a different pattern for like how they like to do some account codes versus others. So there is a little bit of like flexibility in here where it's not exactly the same for every single district because, you know, it also may vary based on different account types and stuff. So, so I just... You know, um, I know that you're not here to listen to me read, but I just wanted to talk through this because I think that this is like a really good introduction to start us off and to keep in mind along the way. Okay. So um, first let's talk about these different account types and um, then we're gonna go look at them in the software. So I promise you, you know, we'll, we'll be in this PowerPoint, but not all day. Um, first, the cash account. So the cash account, when we talk about that, that represents the total of all expended and the received amounts related to the underlying accounts. And this tracks the actual amount of cash that the district has in a bank. So when we're talking about the cash account and we're talking about the total of all of the, the cash accounts that ends up showing the fund balance, 
And when a district is balancing their books to bank, they're looking at this cash level because that that takes everything that they've spent and all of the money that they've had coming in and it does the calculation based on both of those sides of the equation. The appropriation is the total of all of the expended amounts related to the underlying expenditure accounts. Expenditures, those are used directly on transactions and those are for expended amounts. So you're spending money from those expenditure accounts. The revenue is the total of all received amounts or incoming money related to the transactions that use that account. And let's go to our software and look at this. I'm so sorry for my lighting. I realize I look a little bit like a ghost this morning, but as I get more light here, it should get better. Um, okay, so we're logging in here. Um, okay. So first, let's let's take a little pause and kind of look at our software layout. I want to point out a couple of things before we just jump into a page here. Um, so this is our home page. We have our report links um, uh, that we have in this list on the main. And then um, we have our menu options along the top here. So core, this is where we're pretty much going to be for the most part today. This core accounts is our is our main stop. Um, and then transactions. So a lot of these you're seeing the things that we have on the list for tomorrow. There are a couple of things that are used for managing accounts that we will get to. So um, these two menus are where we're mostly going to be um, hopping around today. The other thing that I want to point out here, oops, sorry, I'm getting in these menus. Um, the other thing I want to point out here, though, is right at the top here, above where my little pop-ups are happening. Um, in, in this top corner, it tells me the current posting period. So my current period for my um, test, my demo instance here is February of 2023. And once we start looking at these accounts, and obviously they have amounts associated with them, those are all going to be as of that current period. So they're going to show me the figures um, as they would be um, based on the activity up to February 2023. So this is important um, as you are looking at, you know, these account pages, like especially um, if like in this case, like it's a prior month that's current, you know, if that current period is, um, you know, a certain month, then when you look at those accounts, that's going to be the totals I'm seeing. So um, I just want to point that out. Okay, so let's go to core accounts. And so here's our setup. So um, what we're looking at right now is this tab along the top. And we have each of these account types that I listed out. So we have the cash, the appropriation, expenditure, and revenue. Now, we're also seeing fun here. I know I didn't mention that one. Um, but if we look at this grid, this doesn't have like a create button like this. You wouldn't be like creating just a specific like fund to add to this grid. These are added based on the cash accounts that exist. Um, this is another way of like grouping information for reporting. Um, so we have this out here, so it's available to view. But for the purpose of what we're talking about, mostly with these account codes, we're going to kind of we're going to focus more on the cash um, appropriation, expenditure, and revenue. So let me just hop through these tabs um, real quick here, so we can kind of um, take a look at these. And let's see. Okay. Okay, so um, here's our cash account. So we have um, the account code information here, and then this grid has some of the totals on it, as well as the description over here. We hop through to the appropriation, um, and we'll let this load for a minute and then take a look at these. So here we go, we have our account code. And then we also have a description. Um, you'll notice these grids do all have this checkbox for show active. So by default, you are just going to be seeing the active accounts. You can uncheck this if you're looking for an account that maybe was was made inactive that you're trying to find. So um, if there's something that you think should be in there and you're not seeing, that's a good tip. 
you can build reports right from these grids and there is an option to add more fields uh, to the account grids as well. Um, you know, I know we saw some amounts and stuff on the cash grid. I would say um, be cautious with adding too many of the amount fields to these grids um, because, you know, like usually like, you know, two, three, five, like maybe up to five can be good depending on what they are. But sometimes if you go like just add a bunch of the totals, these are pretty big grids. Like these are, you know, pretty large as far as um, the chart of accounts for some districts. And, and it's actually going to um, be like calculating some of those totals over and over again. So uh, it can just be something to watch out for. But certainly, you know, adding some of the totals on here means not that you can't add them at all. Um, okay, so here's our expenditure accounts. So here's our expenditure um, account codes. And then here's our descriptions. And then last we have revenue. We're just getting a little overview. We're taking like a little bit of a stroll so we can see like what this looks like in the software so that once we start talking about these codes in a little bit more detail, we can kind of um, connect it back. So here's our revenue, here's our description. Um, and again, you can see all of these tabs look very similar as far as you know what you're looking at here. So uh, let's go back here then. So what I have next, and we've had this, um, this is one of the um, charts that I like to come back to when we talk about account codes. So, um, you know, this is something that I'm not sure, sorry, <laughs> spacing was going to bother me. So, you know, if you have, if you have, you know, um, had experience with a, with account structure at all, you might've seen this exact thing. Um, you know, if this is new to you, this is one that I would definitely recommend, like, you know, use this to picture how these account codes work together. And here's what we're seeing. So you have, so you'll have a cash account and there can be multiple cash accounts. There, there are multiple cash accounts in, you know, any one given system, but from, so the cash account is kind of like the highest level of tracking expenses related to a certain fund. And from there, underneath that cash account, you have it split out into other accounts that give more detail. So everything that that cash account is split out into, it's all part of that cash fund, um, but it's just basically defining additional detail to um, a finer level so that you could get reports that show, okay, you know, well, what are the expenses that are being charged to this cash account and what's the money that's coming in what's the revenue in this cash account so on the expense side where you're spending money you have a level for appropriation accounts and then under each appropriation account you'd have an expenditure you'd have you could have multiple one or multiple expenditure accounts that give you the greatest detail about what that account is for and what is being purchased out of there and then on the flip side, you have revenue accounts and those revenue accounts give detail as to where that money is coming in from. So this is kind of the basics of how this all works together. We will be looking at examples. So if this doesn't fully, you know, just like if, you know, if you aren't familiar with these, I understand this might be something right away that doesn't just, you know, okay, <laughs> doesn't really like um, fit right away, but keep this in mind as we start to talk about these different examples. Um, cause this is just, again, a good visual. All right. So before we hop in to actually going through and talking about each one of these like account codes and dimensions, I have some resources linked to this PowerPoint. And these are things that, um, we, here's the UCS manual I mentioned. We are going to take a look in that today. So the SSDT wiki, this is, um, this is our documentation for the software. And this link will actually take you right to our accounts page. So uh, let me just go here real quick. Let's do this. So I'm in uh, USAS documentation. And um, I was under that core menu, just like the software and then accounts. 
And when I look at this page, so look, I have this whole explanation at the top. This talks about cash accounts, appropriation, expenditure. So this is going through a lot of the same information that I just talked through. So this is a good, you know, if you um, want to go back and um, refer to this later, this information is typed out here. And then some of the other stuff that we'll talk about today as far as like creating accounts and, and stuff like that, there are details on this page. So that's where this first one links to. The USAS manual, um, this is uh, the main resource for the account code dimensions. And this also gives information related to this account structure that we're talking about. So, you know, especially if this is something that's new to you, that is going to be um, a great resource at the start. It does give like, um, it does give like a lot of information about how these account codes work that um, you know, maybe worth reading through. Also, though, like we'll see this. I'll I'll actually go to this with our example and we'll look at practical use. But um, you know, I will go here sometimes and then I'll just do a control find. I use this regularly. So this is a great resource to have. Um this links directly to it, or honestly, like just to find it quickly, I just like go to Google and just type in use as manual, and it's usually the first thing that pops up. So this is what it looks like. Hang on, let me get to the top here. And see, it's from the Auditor of State, Uniform School Accounting System, User Manual, and they update this. So um, there are some like notes at the bottom they add in stuff, but here's like um, the introduction is what I had included previously. It gives you like a general overview. And then it actually has listings of what the different parts of the code mean. And uh, we'll, we'll um, again, get into that later. So that's your link for that. Um, and then the last thing here is the EMIS manual. We'll see that there are a couple pieces of the code that actually come from the EMIS manual. So this is a direct link there as well, which we might come back to this slide when we need that. Okay. So what I want to do now is kind of talk through um, each of these parts of the code so that we just have like a general idea of what each one is telling us. And then we'll actually look at like an example, you know, to help with kind of looking these up, like so that we can actually have like a practical example. So the first field here is the TI, and that's a two digit code. That's a transaction indicator. So it defines the type of account or transaction. Now, the interesting part is that um, you don't necessarily see these um, everywhere in our software. Like there are some places where it's visible, but um, this has a lot to do with like the kind of account it is or like the, you know, what it's being used for. And um, as we saw in the, um, in the software, when we looked at that account grid, they're split up into tabs. So it doesn't necessarily need to have that transaction indicator. Um, so yeah, so that one you don't see a lot, but it does exist. It is in that USS manual. So I wanted to talk about it. Um, I think we're okay. I lost my light. Um, okay, the fund. So funds are established by provisions or statutes uh, statutes to assure money is spent for specific purposes and fund numbers are assigned by AOS. So um, this would be, there are um, three categories. So there are local funds, state funds, and federal funds. And um, it's kind of, this is kind of like your, your big overall group as far as like where each type of um, categorizing starts. So like your federal funds are usually in the 500s. And those are those may be associated with like grants. So a grant that the school is getting from the federal level would be tracked through one of those specific fund codes. And then they can account for here's the money that I received from the grant. And here's the money that I spent for the purpose that that grant, you know, had established. So um, the funds are kind of the big groupings. And we'll, we'll take a look at those, too. Um, the function represents programs, subprograms, activities that the expenditures are classified. Um, and then the more detailed to the digit, the more specifically defined. So the function is going to be this four digit code here. 
And for this, so um, thinking things like um, if it is like, you know, maybe like an elementary expense or if it's like a sports expense. So there are different kind of like overarching categories and then it kind of can narrow down if all four digits have a number in them to give you like a really specific program or activity that that would be associated with whatever you're spending that money on. Um, the object further identifies the expenditure um, as it defines goods and services. So this may be something like for the object code, it's going to tell you more so like, was this for something like supplies where it was like a physical thing or what did I spend this money for like salaries for that program um, or you know benefits of those salaries from the program. So the object's going to really tell you kind of more about like what specifically what specific um, again goods or service that um, that expense is related to. The special cost center, so these are used to track costs um, to satisfy temporary or special requirements. And mostly when I see this, so these are district defined. Mostly when I see this, it's, you know, especially in some of those funds that are for things like federal or state, you know, monies that are that, that are coming in, they might have a different special cost center for each fiscal year. So they're tracking the amount they got from one year on this fund special cost center, um, in, so, which is a specific cash account. And then they would make another special cost center to track, you know, it's that same grant, but it's a different year. The subject is used to identify specific educational costs. So this is one of the ones that comes from the EMIS manual. And so this has to do the first two digits of the subject area and the additional four characters are additional breakdown. Um, let's see. So since this one's coming from the EMIS manual, I, uh, I was trying not to hop around too much with these, but I realized that some of this, it might help to see, like, especially with this one. So we're going to try it. We're going to hop around a little bit on this subject one. So I can kind of show you as I talk through it. Okay. So I'm going to 4.7 here. See, it says subject codes. So let me open this up and I have a little bit of scrolling here to do. Okay, so here's an example. So it's this six digit code right here, the subject code. And the first two digits designate like the, the um, make sure I say this right the subject area. So in this example, this is basically music, um, music or perhaps arts. But if I see all of these ones that start with one, two, so this is, you know, general music um, here, but then we have some more specific ones. So like this code is for chorus. This one is instrumental. And so you can see as we scroll down here, like now these ones are more visual art. So O2 visual art, or we have things like, you know, ceramics would have a different code. And really um, why these are coming from the EMIS manual. So this is something again, where if there's money being spent towards a specific subject, like um, they can use this, they would add the subject code A for tracking, um, or, you know, maybe they got specific money that was specifically meant to spend for their ceramics class. So when they actually make a purchase with the money that they specifically got for that ceramics class, this subject code is a way to allow the account that they're charging to be defined to show that. The OPU is the operational unit. This is another one that is district defined. Um, this is used to identify facilities in the system. So it may be a building, department, or office, um, et cetera. Now I mentioned with the function code previously that that could like be like, oh, that's like an elementary expense. But the OPU is very specific to the buildings that that district has. So you know, every school may have elementary, you know, expenses associated with an elementary, 
but like some districts might have multiple elementary schools. So the OPU, I'm gonna hop around with this one too. The OPU is actually defined in the software in the core OPUs page. And they would lay this out. They're all associated with a specific building IRN that uh, for that district. So this would, this IRN is specifically associated with their high school building. And so then they attach that OPU on there. So if they do have a situation where they have multiple elementary schools, like it would, it could show that it's elementary school expense, but then the OPU could be used to divide out like each of the different um, actual elementary buildings. Uh, the instructional level is used to differ differentiate between grade levels or education levels. So yeah, so this makes me think of like, you know, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Um, this one is, you know, not always used on every account, but there are certain accounts I think that they really um, utilize these for when it comes to some of the um, like building expenses um, within like a specific, um, like, you know, like high school, middle school, um, and then job is used to identify staff costs. So um, it's helpful for relating staff costs to the activity that they're assigned. So um, basically it can be used to identify this, uh, identify a staff member by his or her duties rather than like a job title. So this one you may see used with like salary accounts um, and like how those monies related to staff are being spent. Uh, this is another one that is related to the EMIS manual as far as where these codes come from. And then receipt. So the receipt code is used to identify revenues in various funds by the source um, from which they were received and the purpose they serve. So when we start looking at the different account code structures, um, we'll see that the receipt code is in there. It, the um, revenue accounts don't have a function. Instead, they have a receipt code. And so this is like, I think of it as kind of like a parallel um, to that, but um, really, it, so it kind of focuses on like, you know, what, what's the source? Um, so this could be like, like it could tell you that it's from taxes or like food services um, or maybe even like extracurricular activity fees that are coming in that are, they're getting um, money from that they're putting into their bank account. So the receipt code kind of has more definition related to that. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm flipping around a little too much, more than I intended there. Okay, so the special cost centers, I have an extra page for this one because this one has a couple little, um, you know, extra notes on it. Uh, when we're talking about the special cost centers, we're going to see that special cost centers that are 0000 to 8999 are all considered part of the appropriation and cash account with the special cost center of zero. So when we start talking about these cash accounts and how you can like split those out into multiple in the same fund, like I mentioned, it really is only a separate account as far as the totals if it starts with nine. So when I um, run like a report that shows me my cash totals, anything that's in this um, zero to eight, nine, nine, nine range is going to show as one total under the special cost center with all zeros and any that has the special cost center with nines will show a separate line for the totals for the account. The special cost centers can also contain alphabetic characters. So A, B, C, D um, can also be included. And I mentioned this before kind of as my example, but like a lot of times when I see these, they may be able to use, you know, to track different fiscal years um, or it doesn't have to be that though, or just different groupings um, within a specific fund. Okay. And then, you know, I know it's a lot to talk through those and I tried to mention where they're coming from along the way but I made this little quick reference as well to show like where each one of those different account code pieces is coming from.
Okay, any questions on that part? Okay. So now let's kind of put these back together with what we saw on that account when we were looking at the account grid. So first, this is the expenditure side. So we have the cash account and the cash account is made up of a fund and a special cost center. So that again, when we think about that structure, that's kind of like the highest level um, of like how the money is accounted for and grouped together in, in a certain totals. From there, the cash account is split out into appropriation accounts. Those have a bit more detail. So you have the fund, the function, the object, and the special cost center um, are all defined on, on the appropriation account. I do want to point out, you'll notice the function, you know, it's just the first two digits showing here, object, just the first digit showing here. And then the expenditure account has a lot more pieces, right? So you have the fund, the function, object, special cost center, subject, OPU, instructional level, and job. So that is, um, again, the most detailed level for the expenses. And that is the account that you're using, um, the account level that you're using when you're actually charging, um, when you're actually you know spending money when you're actually creating your transactions to um, end up creating a check and then this is the revenue side so you have again your cash account is at the top but you have the revenue account split out to show where the money is actually coming from when it's getting put into that account and so on the revenue account you have your fund receipt special cost center subject and opu and so this is interesting because, you know, I have, you know, obviously my fund special cost center tells me which, which cash account it is. The receipt code tells me where the money is coming from. This does have the subject on there. And so um, like the, the example that I kind of mentioned was, okay, so it could be associate, it could be money that was given to them for like a ceramics um, course. And so when they have that money come in, they may associate that with a specific subject code. And then the OPU, that was the building. So it may say it's for specifically this one, um, you know, one building had this money come in to be associated with it. So um, so that's you, that's the actual layout of each a code of each code type. Let me close out some of these here. And okay, so I know this was a lot of talking and what I really want to do is kind of show you um, an example here. So let's put this into practice and kind of try and like um, put this together so that we can really see um, what all this means. <laughs> so here's our example. So our example is this cash account. So the cash account is um, 300. And then the special cost center is 9534. So this is what my cash account would look like. Underneath that, I have an appropriation account that, again, same fund, same special cost center. But I have this function code that's 4500. And then this is my object that's um, 500. And then this would be an expenditure account that is underneath that, that rolls up into that appropriation, that rolls up into that cash account. So um, again, same fund, same special cost center. You'll notice, so the reason that this one is linked up to that appropriation is because the function starts with the same two digits. So, and then the object starts with the same one digit. So any other expenditure accounts that I had that also had the, those two, um, sorry, that had the two digits the same as the function and the one digit the same as the object, those are going to um, be a part of the total for that appropriation account. Now, let's go use all of our tools of, you know, where those um, different pieces, the account code of where those come from to see like, what is this account for? Because I'll tell you this, like, once people get good with these account codes and familiar with them, somebody could probably look at this account code and tell you exactly what this is for. Uh, and then some people probably could tell you like the 
you know, main use of it, but then maybe that function code, like they're not sure exactly, you know, which one. So, so let me show you what I mean. So if we go, oh, yeah, do this. Here we go. Okay. So if we go take a look at the different pieces of this code, here's what it means. It's a district managed student activity and it's middle school girls softball supplies specifically. So the fund, let's go to this use test manual. So I mentioned um, that you can come in here and see all of these codes. I'm gonna be honest with you, here's my trick. I do control F um, for find on my keyboard. And then I come in here and I usually just um, search. So either I'll search by like, you know, what I want. So if I'm looking for like a function, I might search for function, but some of those words are in here multiple times. Sometimes you can actually just search the actual code and then make sure you're in the right spot. But for this one, I um, did some searching ahead. I'm gonna try not to scroll too much on you. So I know that I want to start with um, local funds. Um, so here's my search, but really this top um, header is what really kind of helps you know you're in the right place. So here's the different fund listings. And um, let's see. So um, I should just check in my notes real quick, sorry. So um, you have the local funds. And then um, if I scroll a little bit here, I have my state funds. So my state funds all here in the 400s. And then here's where I was mentioning the federal funds. Um, so these are in the 500s. And you can see here that there are some different, you know, fund types. So um, Title I, we have like an idea part B. This is for special education. This is one I see quite a bit is the 516. So um, that's a grant that they get. Um, that they may get. And then if they get that grant in, they're going to use this fund code. They need to use this fund code to manage it. Um, and then so on, there are more um, down here, but we're looking for the 300. So let's do a little bit of scrolling back up here. And here it is, district managed student activity. So from there, I know that this has to be a student activity and um, that's kind of like my main grouping. Next, I had my function. And um, here, let's flip back and forth here. So my function is 4534. And um, so this is one I might just search because four digits is like a lot of things are three digits. So for, if I search this four digits, I might just find it. So let's let's go ahead and do that. So here we go. So um, again, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna scroll up and check my header. My, my title is functions and that's what I want. I do want a function. So this is it. So 4534 is for softball. So that's how I know that piece of it. However, I kind of mentioned that these um, functions, like the more digits that are defined, the more specific information you get. So what I'm also going to look at is let's scroll up here. So 4500 is sport oriented activities. So sports. Then when I start looking here, I have 4530 is a girls sports team. And then that's broken down into softball. So when I'm looking at my actual, like, what does this mean? It's a girls sports team softball. So it basically like I could, if I just had an expense that maybe was related to like all girls sports, um, you know, maybe I would just have four, five, three, zero instead of four, five, three, four. But because it's specifically for softball, I'm using all four of those digits, which that's kind of an odd concept. But um, I do think it helps here when you're kind of looking at how it's laid out in this manual to sort of visualize that structure. Okay, and then next was our um, object code. So our object code was 510. So I'm just gonna search for that. And, and I'm looking for an object. So again, look at this is functions for the header, not what I want. So I'm gonna do a little next. Nope, that's still four digits. Let me skip through. Okay, here, this looks, this is looking good. Objects, perfect, that's what I want. 
So I can see here 500 is supplies and materials, 510 is general supplies. I do have more detailed codes under here, but this account isn't using it. It's just using kind of general supplies. And this is where I kind of mentioned like some districts may um, do things a little bit differently or like even just different depending on what the account is, it could vary. So like there are some times where they may very specifically you know, does, like use a 512 for office supplies, or, you know, maybe they just use general supplies and that's okay too. So general supplies is what our account code is telling us. General supplies, perfect. The special cost center, again, this is district defined. So um, we may have, because it's um, our fund, the 300 is district managed student activities. So maybe in this case, it's not necessarily fiscal years, but for each different kind of like activity grouping, they might have a different special cost center. Um, they could do fiscal years. They could do, okay, here's the amount I have for, you know, fiscal year 23, uh, you know, or school year 22, 23. This is going to be my special cost center for any expenses related to the sports this year. Uh, but they get to decide that. The subject code is all zeros. We don't need a subject code for a sport account. Um, and then the OPU. So let's go back here. We're on this OPU page against our core OPUs. Uh, and let's plug in 300. And 300 is middle school. And here's the IRN for it. So in our account code, this is how I know that this is not just girls softball supplies, it's middle school girls softball supplies. And then, oops, we got another zero on here. Sorry about that. Um, and then we have the instructional level, which again, that's usually related to like a grade level. So um, if it's zero, zero, it's no specific um, grade level. Uh, if you look in this use as manual, it say like district wide, which district wide is generally just like it's not specifically narrowed down to just one, uh, just one thing. Um, and then the job is also zeros. So, again, that's not really relevant for this account code, so they can just leave it as zero. So you can see that if there are like certain accounts. Um, you know, that use as manual can be helpful, um, you know, at the ITC level, like a lot of the times, like, you know, you're not necessarily helping them like define these codes or anything, but it can be helpful to get familiar with these because especially like um, with some of the different function and object code combinations, like you get used to seeing certain ones. So payroll, salaries, benefits, like those all use like specific, you know, function and object codes um, for the most part, uh, mostly, ob let's, let's look at the object codes um, since we're here already. <laughs> so I'm gonna scroll up here, uh, just give us, a, sometimes a visual is better than me just <laughs> talking at you. So sorry for the scrolling. Um, one more, one more. Okay, so here we go. So object codes. So if we see here in our 100 object codes, we have certificated employees, salaries, and wages. And so regular salaries are usually to this 111 um, object code for certified employees. Um, and then look, we have non-certificated um, is down here. And if we scroll a little bit more, uh, look at we have 200 object codes, our employees retirement and insurance benefits. And so, you know, definitely once you start seeing the account types, like there are some that, you know, just by seeing some pieces of these codes, like I can kind of give you a little bit of insight to, you know, the account they're using and like maybe what the situation is. And that can sort of be, um, you know, helpful, uh, even just, you know, getting, getting a bit comfortable with these. Um, so yeah, so uh, that's a code now. Let's reverse, let's let's go back and reverse this. So we looked at this one where we said, okay, here's the cash, here's the appropriation, here's the expenditure. We've defined what the expenditure means now. So let's go the opposite direction. If I can get this scrolling to work. Here we go. Okay, so let's go the other direction now. 
and talk about, you know, what these higher levels mean. So we know that the expenditure account we're talking about is the middle school girls softball supplies. If we look at this um, appropriation account here, so this is the student activity, it's sports supplies. So same fund, same special cost center, but this function that was 4,500, we saw that that was sport oriented activities. And then we saw that that object that was at the higher level was supplies and materials. So when I'm looking at this appropriation account, this could be all of this, all different kind of sport activities, supplies, and I could get a total of the supplies for all of the sports that I have put entered in under this, you know, specific um, code structure. And so um, as far as like thinking about reports and stuff, right? So if they want to get a report and say, okay, how much did I spend on the softball supplies so far? And then how much do I have left? Okay, well, I don't, you know, maybe I um, like decided, maybe I originally thought I was going to spend less on those softball supplies. So now let me look at what I have for my other sports. And I don't know, you know, this is kind of a hypothetical example. I don't know if they're really, <laughs> if they're really allowed to just like move it from one sport to the other, I, you know, um, but, you know, if you wanted to see a total say of like, you know, here's what I've spent on all of my sporting supplies so far, and here's how much I had left kind of in that whole grouping, the appropriation account would give you sort of a different group to see, uh, a different like um, way to see the totals for that group, for a group of related expenses. And then um, last, we have the cash account here. And so the cash account, you know, again, that when we looked at the 300, that was for district managed student activities. So that would be a grouping of all of the student activities that they've chosen to associate with that special cost center. And that, I mean, it would be under that fund. Okay. Let me just make sure I got everything I wanted to say in that example. Okay, do we have any questions about that? All righty. All righty. Well, um, I just pulling up my notes here because we're gonna um switch kind of back into the software. So we'll get you back in there. And what we're moving on to next is talking about actually like creating accounts, um, you know, creating or editing or um, removing like that sort of thing. So we're going to go through actually like updating accounts in the software. And so the first thing here is creating accounts. Um, so I'm going back to my core accounts page. And just for the purpose of our example, we're going to go to this expenditure account and start here on the expenditure grid. Okay, so um, actually, you know what, before we get into create, let's do this real quick, is um, so obviously, you know, now that we've talked through each one of these different parts of the code, you know, what they mean, uh, now that we're back in here, we see, you know, we were seeing on these grids how the different pieces are broken out here. And you do have the option to filter on these. So if I wanted to come in and see all of the expenditure accounts I have that match this 300 fund, I could do that. And then here, let's type in my special cost center too. And so here are all of the different accounts that I have just in my um, software right now that show um, that are attached to that specific um, cash account. And some of these are larger, some of these are smaller. If we looked at just like the um, 001 and then all zeros for the special cost center, that's my general fund. Like that's going to have a bunch of accounts. You can see them all here. Um, but certainly like those are used on reports as well as filtering. Um, you know, we'll see that in a bit here as well. But uh, just to mention that before we jump into actually <laughs> creating new ones. <laughs> so uh, let's do create. And I'm gonna just open this up a little bit more because I'm kind of zoomed in here. So when I open this up, let me uncheck this so we have these options. 
um, you can see here that it opens me a window. I have, you know, just zeros for all of these different code pieces. So I would need to type in like what I want my account code to be that I'm adding to the software. And then I have this description box. I have the active check bar, uh, check mark. It's active by default. The XREF codes, um, those can be handy. That's a bit um, more for our like overview. So I'm just gonna, um, not gonna go too deep into detail on that one. Um, but the start and stop dates, I do wanna talk about. And um, so this is like, basically, um, instead of just having this like active or inactive, like um, you could have it where this account is only able to be used within a certain time frame. So um, if someone goes to try and use this account and it's not between the start and stop dates that are entered, then they're not, they wouldn't be able to use it on like a transaction. And then at the bottom here, there are just some custom fields. Um, some of these came over from the classic system. There is like a project to date field, um, which we usually do talk about the projects in the um, intermediate training later in the year. Um, but these essentially for now, like the main thing to know is these are just kind of like custom fields to use. However, the district, um, you know, if they have special things that they want to track. Um, okay, so, oh, oh, wait, one more thing is create new and close. So these two little check boxes up by the save button, um, if they are in a situation where they're adding multiple accounts, like in a row, this can be helpful. If I check create new, then when I create the account, um, it would pop up like another box so that I could um, just continue like making one after another. Or if I know I'm just making this one, I could do close and then it would just close this window when I'm done instead of having it like save and then we have to like manually X in the top corner. So, all right, so let's plug in a fund here. Let me just get my notes because I wanna um, add something specific. So we're going to stick in the same um, fund special cost center. I'm going to make like a salary related account here. Remember we said that object code, the 1111 was regular salaries. So I don't know that they would actually pay salaries out of an account like this. So we're kind of running wild with examples here, but I want to show how we have, so we have this different function code. And um, if you'll remember, we, when our previous function started with four or five, so the appropriation account associated that would be 4,500. Um, but I'm using a function code that starts with one, two, which is different. Um, so more on that in a second. The other thing I wanna mention before I save is that I'm gonna leave this description blank. They can definitely add a description here if they have a specific description in mind, but I'm gonna leave it blank and show you what it does. Okay, so a couple things to mention here. First, because that function started with one, two, I didn't actually have an, I didn't have the appropriation level in my system existing. So the software created it. An associated appropriation account didn't previously exist. So it was automatically created to be linked to this expenditure account. So I have the cash account level. I'm adding the expenditure account level. So that middle level was the appropriation. And based on seeing this part of the code and this part of the code, it was able to know that that should be categorized, that should roll up into this appropriation of code with these parameters. So it just created it. If you create um, the, uh, so if, if there's not like a cash count too, it would also um, do that. Um, okay, the next thing we're looking at here is the description. So district manage activity and here, let me, let's, um, let's look at this in the grid. I'm gonna close this, but we're gonna look at this in the grid instead. Just wanna be able to see it without all the scrolling. Just move our 
description of the fund. Okay, so this is what it added. District manage activity and then academically gifted regular cert. And so basically um, it took descriptions to like district manage activity. That's what we saw for the 300 fund. And then um, it's pulling some of this information here. Let me go look up my... So this was the function that I gave it, academically gifted, for because that's a special instruction, academically gifted. Again, this doesn't necessarily make sense with a sports account, but we're rolling with it just to see how this um, picks in. But so academic, so this part of this description automatically generated based on the function code that was added. And then regular cert, that is based on the object code that we added. So the software does know, like, you know, so if you're looking at these descriptions and it, like some of them, when you look like if they just defaulted all the descriptions, like look how similar these can be, but that's because it's basing it on like what these account codes mean. Some districts definitely come in here and customize these into things that make sense for them. Um, but yeah, those aren't just kind of like, you know, random, like those are all based on exactly what the code is um, defined as. Okay. Okay, let's see. I think we've covered that. Okay, let's talk about cloning accounts then. So if we're in here and if we do this view icon, this is the eyeball, that's the first one. If we come in here and view this, um, any of the accounts we can click clone. And when we clone this, um, it does give me all of the same information as that original account. But I could come in here and I could like modify, you know, certain parts of the code. Like if I just wanted to change, you know, one thing on here, because it's going to be a very similar account, then I could do that. Um, and then I would just save. So that makes it a little bit easier when you're making, you know, similar accounts. Um, and then let's see. Um, okay, deleting accounts. So let me go back here. Oh, sorry. Go back here and get our list sorted. Okay, here is the account that I just added. Um, this one with the one, two, one, zero. So I could come in here and delete this. And it says, you know, do you want to delete? I get a pop-up, I get delete, and I can delete it. Now, this isn't always the case. So I just created that account. Nothing happened with it. Nothing was posted against it. Nothing happened with, like, I didn't do budgeting in between. Like, I just created it five minutes ago, and now I can delete it. So generally that is the situation in, in realistic situations where you can delete an account if it's been created, but it's never been used or anything like that. Um, once it has any sort of activity associated with it, then um, when you go to delete, like, so let's see, let me make sure this is one of the ones that I was using. So if I go to delete this one, it will come up and tell me there are existing transactions and I can't delete that. So um, that's usually the case, I would say. Um, instead, what they could do is come in, edit this, and uncheck active, and then save, and that would make it inactive. And um, I'm not going to save that. But if it's made inactive, then, you know, by default, it's going to be hidden from this grid. It can be filtered out of reports. It won't show up when they're going to create a transaction. So uh, usually inactivating is is the way to go there. Um, so here's the delete. So here's editing. And uh, let me just go back here. So again, I know I kind of did this, but I guess I didn't. I want to make sure I pointed out is it is this little like pencil um, and paper icon to edit. And then that's where I could come in here and uncheck the active. There are certain things you can change and not change when you're editing. So notice like when I'm in edit mode, I cannot change the account code. If I wanted a different account code, I'd have to create a new one. Um, I can change this description. I can add 
the start and stop dates. So there are some things that I can do and some things that I can't do. Um, I can never change manually these amounts here, but that is where we, we are going with this is we're going to talk about where these amounts come from in ways that you can um, update them. But in just like a simple edit mode, you're not changing amounts or anything. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, I have in this PowerPoint is, um, here we go again, is um, when you make accounts inactive. So um, how it works is that if you make, so say you have a whole cash account. I have this entire cash account for all of these activities. Again, let's go with the example of like, it was for a specific fiscal year. That fiscal year was two years ago, and I don't want those accounts to show up anymore because they shouldn't be used. I'm not, you know, spending anything from them. I'm not getting money for that previous year anymore. So I want those to be sort of like hidden. Like, I don't want those to be an option for somebody to accidentally use when they're trying to make a purchase. So what I can do is if I come in here to the cash account, And I'm just going to pick a random cash account here. Oops, hang on. Let me switch this. So I'm just looking at the active ones. So if I just pick a random cash account here, let's let's look at this. And if I come in here, I can edit this and I could uncheck the active box and then save. So as simple as that, you know, with the editing portion of this. Now, when I do this, all right, when I uh, make that cash account inactive, it will impact the cash account and all associated accounts. So any appropriation accounts with that fund special cost center, any um, expenditure accounts with that uh, fund special cost center, any revenue accounts with that fund special cost center, those will no longer be able to be used on transactions. So again, like what we'll be talking about over the next couple of days. You're not going to be able to pick it for a purchase order. You're not going to be able to pick them for a receipt if it has a, a cash account that has a fund special cost center that's inactive. However, when this box is unchecked, if I go look at the accounts with this fund special cost center, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't uncheck their active box. So it just makes it so that the, basically the system is smart enough to know that if the higher up account is inactive, you can't use the lower account underneath it. And so it all like the actual practical uses on transactions, it doesn't matter that those other ones aren't, you know, also unchecked. So that is something that can be confusing. Um, we do actually have a, a process where, you know, if they prefer to have all of the boxes unchecked, we have a mass change where that can just be like run and then done. It's a little bit more complicated, so we won't get to that in the overview, but um, just know that's an option if it does come up. Um, but for all actual like purposes, just unchecking this, it will make the it will make all of the associated accounts unavailable to to actually use. So it is just as simple as this. Um, I'm not going to save this, but uh, let me go in here. Oh, and so um, where this can be um, good to know, especially on like a support side, you know, so if you have um, someone that, that comes to you and says, hey, I'm trying to use this account. And it's not showing up as an option for me to pick when I'm trying to enter this requisition or enter this purchase order. Um, if the account isn't there, you can come look on this account grid, you know, and look up the account. And if that account is active, then you might be like, huh, well, why is it not showing? Well, if it's not showing, then perhaps what you need to do is check the appropriation and then also check the cash account to make sure that all associated accounts are um, are active. So um, that's just like a tip that I have in here um, to help with uh, troubleshooting. That's a troubleshooting thing that can happen sometimes where, you know, if it's maybe maybe something isn't um, showing that they, they think maybe it should be, and then maybe it actually shouldn't be there because 
the cash account is inactive. Okay. And then mass ad accounts. So for mass adding accounts, this is specific again to the cash account. Uh, let's see here. So um, if we go to this cash grid, okay. So uh, actually, let's go find our example fund that we're talking about here. Nope, nine, five, three, four. Okay. And okay, so again, I'm gonna click the eye icon to view. And so right up here, I have this mass ad option. Now that sounds great, right? Like, you know, instead of having to go through and click and make accounts. So really, okay, what this does. So we looked at our expenditure grid. We saw all of the expenditure accounts that we had that had this 300, 9534. And we had like, you know, four, three or four accounts there or whatnot. And, um, Basically, what the mass ad will do is if you have this cash account and all of the accounts underneath it, I can essentially copy those to a new special cost center, but it has to be within the same fund. So let me click on this. So see, I can copy all of the account, like the account codes from 300, 9543 to 300, um, um, you know, I didn't test this one out ahead of time because once once the new cash account exists, then um, you can't do it again. So like it has to be an, a new special cost center that doesn't exist. Probably could go look and make sure that this one doesn't exist. Okay, yeah, it does. Ah, let me let's do this. Let's open another tab because I realized once I was already kind of in this page. But we should have checked. It's okay though. All right, so I'm just opening a second tab in this in the software just so we don't have to go away from that page. Um, and let's go look up and find a special cost center that doesn't exist, but it has to be in the 300 fund. And let's make it start with nine five. See what we got available. Okay, three five. Oh look, nine five three six doesn't exist. So let's do that. So nine five three six. Submit. And then look, it's telling me. Okay, so it created the cash account. Boom. And then I had my appropriation accounts. So I had this one. This is my forty five hundred that we talked about. Um. And then I have uh, my other appropriation here. And then I have all of these different expenditure accounts. So what it's doing is it created these because I had these in my software already that had the 9534. So now it just kind of like, it kind of like cloned them all for me. Um, so, and then these are the revenue accounts. So this can be really useful. Again, like I know I keep talking about how the special cost centers, like, those might be something where they'd have a new one fiscal year to fiscal year. So if you think about it, so say I get this grant every year. So if I get this grant this year and I set up all of the accounts that I know I use for that grant of like how I spend that money, when I get the grant next year, I might continue spending them on the same things. So my account codes are probably gonna be pretty similar. So instead of having to go through and create all of those account codes again, or like clone, clone them individually and just change the special cost center, I could do this mass ad option. And that is very helpful. Okay. All right. So um, the next thing I want to get into, we are actually going to go back, look at those accounts. And we're going to start talking about what some of the numbers mean, what some of the totals mean. Um, so I think I we're at like 1015 here. I think let's take a little break before we get into the second half of this. Um, so let's see, yeah, it's 1014. So let's just take like six minutes, five, six minutes. So at 1020, we'll get we'll get rocking again. Um, but yeah.
that way, if anybody needs to step away, get more coffee, <laughs> um, even just kind of reset before we jump into more numbers, um, we'll do that. So, all right, we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So, all right, all right. So let's hop into our next thing here. Um, make sure we are recording. Okay. So, uh, next I want to talk about the totals, um, on these are on these accounts and where they come from. And I think talking about kind of the structure and how these accounts, how the different account levels work together, um, we'll kind of see that as we go through and actually now put the numbers into it. So the expenditure account totals, um, they're calculated based on transactions in the system. And again, they show as of the current posting period. So, you know, I mentioned that at the beginning, our, our demo software is in February. So all of these totals are showing activity up through February. If there's anything that was entered in March, that's not accounted for in what we're actually viewing in the totals on these accounts yet, um, except for maybe the future fields. Um, so and then the other thing that I wanted to point out here is notice the symbols that show how some of these account, um, these amounts are figured into totals. And I'll, I'll point this out as we go, but you can kind of see here that some of these fields have like a little plus, minus, or equals before them. And that really is giving you a lot of information here. So let me switch back. We're going to the expenditure grid. And boom, here's our example account. So I'm going to view this and open this up. And so here's what we're looking at here. So uh, I do have um, these kind of like listed out on the PowerPoint, but I think what I'm going to do is we're going to kind of stay here and then try and like talk through, just talk through what we're seeing here. So the first two fields here, you have the gap original budget and the initial budget. So these fields come from budget transactions. Um, the gap original budget could be like a gap initial or a gap adjustment. The initial budget is specifically like initial budget transactions. And where that comes from, it could be two places. It could come from your budgeting uh, proposed amounts, which um, again, I'm not going to get too much into that today, but we did a training back in February that talked about um, how to post the budgets and that actual process when those um, proposed amounts are applied, they actually create little transactions in the background that are like budgeting transactions that will show, um, that will post an initial budget. And let's go up here. I'm going to click on, so again, I'm in view of the expenditure account. I have this up here for budgeting adjustments. And if I click on this, I can actually see all of the like budget transactions that are associated with this account. So by viewing this, I have this gap initial type of transaction for 5,000, and then I have initial budgeting transaction for 5,000. So that right there is very specifically what is adding to this initial budget right here. Th this is where this figure is coming directly from. The carryover encumbered. So the carryover encumbrance is based on the outstanding encumbrances on what was outstanding at the end of last year. So um, again, I know we'll get into talking more about purchase orders uh, tomorrow, but the purchase orders um, determine like the amount that they encumber to spend. So they have that kind of like almost like set aside in a way is how I think of it. And so basically what this is saying is that at the end of last year, I still planned to spend $250 from this account. So I'm just carrying that over this year because, you know, my intention was to have that be like accounted or like almost budgeted for in a way. Um, and if I do this, so I, I do have my second tab open here. Um, let me just show you. Um, actually, you know what? Let Let's table that because uh, it is a little bit complicated to look at that. And I think we're going to get into the PO reports tomorrow. I think I'm getting a little too excited there. 
Uh, but just know that is going to be your outstanding purchase orders at the end of the last fiscal year, which based on our current period, let me minimize this. So our current period is February 2023. That means my current fiscal year is 2023. So my carryover would be whatever the encumbrances were at the end of 2022. So that's how that works. Adjustments. So the adjustments, I don't have any here right now, but the adjustments are going to be any budget adjustments that were entered after the initial budget. So, you know, we saw that initial budget line that could come from like the budgeting module or not module, but the budgeting um, process, or they can enter the initials manually. So that's an option too. Um, or if they're just adding more money to what they initially planned, if they want to have some like additional like budget amount or like what they expect to spend changes, they can add a budget adjustment to be included. And then we have the expendable amount. So let me flip back here. So here's what we just talked through, but let's look at this for a minute. So the expendable, the expendable is a calculation. It's the initial budget plus the carryover encumbered, encumbered plus or minus adjustments, depending if it's positive or negative, equals the expendable. So you can see here, this is this is an equation. So let me, I almost want to do this. Hang on just a second. Hmm. Wish I had a, okay, well, let's, let's try and do it with a scroll. So what I wanted, what I was going to try and do is hide everything below that so we can just focus on that, but it's fine. <laughs> so, uh, so we have the initial budget up here. So we have this, this first field, and then we have plus the carryover encumbrances, and then plus or minus whatever's in this field, which is zero. And that's where this figure is coming from. Expendable means what I have to spend, what I expect to spend. The next one we have is the actual expended. So not what I expect to spend fully. This is what I've already spent. So 580, um, what that comes from is that would come from actual transactions that exist in the software. So when I actually post a disbursement, which is a check. So when I actually cut a check and spend that money, um, or there are, you know, some other ways that that expended amounts can be updated, like a reduction of expenditure or an error correction. Um, but if there's an actual transaction, it's not just like, like not, not just a PO, when I actually spend it, that's going to be added to this total. The encumbered, now that's where when I get to the POs and I'm talking about kind of what I'm um, expect like what I'm allocating money for, which I promise you, Pat will probably do a much better job of explaining these actual transactions tomorrow. Um, but I think that's why I kind of want to look at these figures now, give you like a little preface of like when we look at those, how those are going to impact these reports. So encumbered, this is related to the amount that is still remaining on the purchase orders versus what's actually been issued as a check. Um, and then the encumbered balance. So again, another calculation, since this is the equals. So what that's going to be, it's your expendable minus what's been spent minus what's encumbered equals your unencumbered balance. So this is a direct calculation of these figures here. The percentage here indicates what is... Um, available still here. So this is your unencumbered. That's what's left to spend. So it's 82% is still available based on, you know, what the expendable and then the actual spent amount is. And then you have your future encumbered. So this is like any POs that are dated later than the current period. Requisitioned amount. So that is requisitions. Again, we'll talk about those tomorrow. 
Um, that this one, it, this field only shows if the um, pre encumbrance module is turned on. So if it's only um, there if they like choose that they use requisitions and have those amounts tracked. And then that figures into a remaining balance. So again, so this is, you know, basically one big calculation. The GAP original budget, this one is kind of like for reporting, but if you basically start at the initial budget and then kind of, you know, follow these symbols, you know, to, to figure out what the equation is here. Um, some additional at the bottom, you have future year encumbrances or requisitions. So POs or RECs, if they are entered for this, like if say you're at the end of the fiscal year and things are starting to be entered for the next year, those may be tracked. Um, the next year proposed, that is another field that I talked about on the budgeting training. Um, when they're in the budgeting process, anything in that proposed amount grid uh, will show on that proposed field. Any questions about any of these fields? Okay. So let me flip over then to the appropriation account. And um, so what we'll see on this one is, uh, look at these are very similar. I mean, the fields themselves are, are pretty much the same. Again, you can see this is the calculation, um, you know, initial encumbered adjustments. And the one thing that we'll see on this page though, is that, hey, these figures are a bit different though, right? Like when I was looking at my expenditure account, it was only 5,000, but here it's 5,500. Um, and basically the reason for that is, so this could be multiple expenditure accounts that qualify for those parameters grouped together. So I won't go through, you know, what each one of these fields specifically means because it's really the same fields. It's just the transactions that qualify to be included in the totals for this is a little bit more broad. And again, just to put that back to our example is the first account that we looked at the 5,000 um, initial budget was specifically for middle school girls softball, where this is going to be a total of middle school girls softball and any other sports accounts that I had in that group for supplies. So that's why this one would be more because it's going to include softball and anything else um, that has those parameters. Okay, so um, then we have the revenue side here and let's go catch up in our uh, in our PowerPoint here. So here's appropriation and then here's our revenue totals. So um, again, these are calculated based on the transactions in the system and show as of the current period. So it's the same for all of these pages. And um, this one does also have some calculated figures but they are just a bit different. Um, when we're looking at the revenue side. So let's grab one of these. I forget which one has the amounts. Of course, I'm going to do it last. Here we go. Okay. So um, just like with the expenditure accounts, the initial revenue, so this um, up here, the like initial, um, so the the budgeted is like what they expect to receive, right? So um, it's what on the expenditure side, it's what they expect to spend. On the revenue side, it's what they expect to receive, what they what they think they're getting, what they're planning on getting. And I will say, like, I don't know if um, they always enter the anticipated revenues um, on these accounts. Like sometimes I've seen where they just leave it blank or maybe even leave it you know, um, not entered until like the end of the year. But this is an option. It's anticipated revenues through the same budgeting process. And um, again, it has the adjustments up here where you can see 
if these were posted and it has it's the initial so it looks very similar to um, the same thing you'd see on the expenditure account. This one doesn't have a carryover because on the revenue side, we don't have anything like POs. It's just a receipt. Um, but you can do adjustments. So if a budget adjustment is entered partway through the year, then you would see that um, in this field. And then receivable is the total of the initial and the adjustments, what they expect to get in. The actual received is this is receipts receipts in the system um let's see receipts or like distributions error corrections can add into this total uh so that is based on the actual transactions that are entered and then remaining is going to show here's how much you know based on what i thought i was going to receive based on what i've received how much is remaining to still how much money am i still expecting to get what's the percentage so um that's there and then project to date, um, again, like we saw the project to date uh, field previously, that is something we usually talk about in an intermediate training. Um, usually that's like if they designate um, certain accounts where like they're expecting, they, they're wanting to track amounts like more than um, like a, a full, fis more than like a fiscal year. Um, Cause you can see these are kind of for set timeframes that can be used. Um, and then again, next year proposes from budgeting. And I should mention this too, um, speaking of fiscal year, is that the other thing that we notice on this grid is that these have the different columns, right? So this first column that we're really focusing on is for the fiscal year. Second column is for the month and the third column is for the calendar year. And these are kind of divided out so the fiscal year is going to show me, um, and again, like I said, those are based on transactions. So, and it's based on the current period. So it's looking to see, okay, if the actual received is a total of my receipts that use this account, I don't necessarily want that for all time. I wanna know within this current year. So actual received is going to be a total of all of the receipts that are dated July 1st, 22, through February 28th, 23. And that's, so that's for the fiscal year. The month column is going to show me all of the receipts that exist for this account, February 1st through February 28th. Calendar year, that's gonna be since January 1st. So, um, you know, all of the account types that we're looking at have these different columns here. And that's the case for like, why it's showing you those figures. Um, the fact that we have these different columns and we have these totals that we see on here, this is going to become important when we look at the reports. Because if you think about it, and when we see those reports, we're gonna see that there's a fiscal to date column. There's a month to date column. And the reports, especially the account summary reports that we're talking about pull directly from what we're seeing on this page. So when we go into that report later and we see a fiscal year to date total, it's pulling from the fiscal year column on this account. So I just wanna make sure to mention that. Okay, I know this is a little bit repetitive, but let's look at the cash account because this one is different. All right, so we start with the initial cash. Sorry, um, we start with the initial cash on this one. Um, and on this though, this is not, um, we have cash adjustments, which we're not gonna get into that. Um, we're, we're not gonna, that's not the same thing as the budget adjustments that we looked at. Uh, that's like a manager only um, situation that would only happen in specific, uh, very specific circumstances. So, but there's not like a budget, you know, adjustment one on here is my point because this initial cash is not just an estimate. Um, this is determined by the fund balance at the end of the prior fiscal year. So when they closed 2022, their fund balance was this amount for this, for this cash account. And then that gets rolled over as their starting cash. Again, these cash accounts are what they balance to their bank totals. So, this is like the full cash that we started with. Um, now we have receipts. 
and then we have expenditures. Again, we're not we're no longer when we look at this cash account working with these figures of like this is my expected to spend or my expected to receive. These are now the actual figures. This is the actual receipts and the actual expended that we saw um totals from this is totaling those from the lower accounts um on uh, within this cash account. So Okay, so the total receipts, you know, we saw that figure. That was what we received in so far this year. And then expense uh, expenditures. So this is everything that was spent out of this cash account so far this year. So what this does, it takes this calculation. It says, here's the cash I started with. Here's how much I received in. Here's how much I got. So I'm adding that to my cash. And then here's how much I spent. That's how much I used to purchase things. So I'm taking that out and subtracting it. And then here's where my fund balance is now. So again, I have my little plus minus equals to show me that that's how the fund balance is calculated. This can be very helpful when you're looking at some of these reports later on to keep in mind that this is like a pretty simple equation and it's all based on the actual amounts. So you can take, take the like appropriated budgeted, you know, out of the equation for that. Encumbered, again, that's related to the remaining amounts on purchase orders, on open purchase orders. And then that figures into unencumbered balance. And then um, future encumbered. So again, that's like future purchase orders dated after my current period. Um, Pre-encumbered, that's requisitions. That's the, the requisition total we talked about um, that is optional. And then ultimately those could be figured into a remaining balance. And then we have some other additional fields down here um, similar to the other accounts. But um, so really the big main part of this is these first four columns in my mind. Um, because notice what we saw is that we have that appropriation and expenditure side. And those ones were, you know, one side, one half of the equation. And then we had the revenue side. So revenue side, expenditure side. So you have, you know, this and this included in here. And um, if we just go back to, hang on, let me do this so I don't have to flip around too much. So if we go back to this image that we started with, I um, mean, kind of relate this back. So when I'm talking about this cash account, I had my initial cash that I started with. And then um, I'm adding anything from these accounts and I'm subtracting anything from these accounts to give me my final fund balance. So that's how those kind of all play together there. Okay. All right. So let's get back to where we were. We're doing pretty good here. Let me get down. Cash count totals. Boom. Here we are. Okay. We went through this. So the next thing we're going to talk about here is the account summary reports. So now that we've talked about all of the money that goes into those accounts, all of the fields that we saw on those accounts, absolutely, sometimes you can add those, you know, to the grid to see certain things, but really all of those fields that we saw, you know, even just on one individual account, you might want to see those for a grouping of accounts and the reports are really a great way to do that. So the cash summary report is going to show the totals from that cash account that we just looked at. Appropriation and budget summary, totals from those um, accounts, and then the revenue summary is from the revenue accounts. So here's what this looks like. Um, so first one here, I have a cash, uh, cash summary report. Let me... Wait, hang on, let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. All right, this is about as good as I can, I can get. So um, this cash summary report, look, initial cash, and then I have received, expended, and my fund balance. So these are the same fields that we, that we saw for that calculation. And um, then again, remember I mentioned we have the month to date column. So month to date, um, received and expended encumbrance and unencumbered balance. So these are all of the same fields that I was seeing on that account. Let's go uh, real quick and let me show you 
where you run this. So homepage, or you can go to the report manager, but I'm just going to do this from the homepage, is the cash summary. And let me just switch this to the default. So I'm going to run it real quick for everything. So obviously my example is generated just for the one cash account we've been talking about. But um, of course, there are multiple funds, there are multiple cash accounts out there. So um, when we actually go and run it here, this is where, you know, yeah, I can see in my little example, this is the same information that I had on that one page I was looking at. But when I actually do the cash summary report, I can see everything together. Um, the other thing, oh, yeah, here we go. Let's look at this before I get on another train of thought here. So see, I can see all of my different cash accounts listed out here and I can see the initial cash. Here's how much that was received. So that gets added. Here's how much was spent that gets subtracted. And then here's the fund balance. And um, when I go to the bottom here, I have the grand total of all of my cash accounts compiled together. And so if I'm looking at like my total in my bank, you know, my fund balance here. So if this is the cash that I started with, here's all of the money I've got in from all of my different funds, from all of my different grants, from any fees that I've charged. If I got money from taxes, like everything that I've received is now grouped into this total. And then everything that I've spent is here. So my new bank balance should be this. So that's why this cash summary report is so big because it's pulling everything from all of those smaller accounts and pulling that into one big total. All right. So then back to um, what we're seeing here on the um, on our little overview of these reports. So the revenue summary report is showing me the receipt side, the revenue side. Um, and here's all of my different accounts all of my different revenue accounts. And in here you can see, I just have um, a receipt that was charged on one. So here's the received amount. And notice this is the same as this received amount here. I ran these both for the same cash account. So this shows me um, what specific receipt account or if there were multiple that that's coming from. On the expenditure side, I have my appropriation. So here I ran this again for the same cash account. Here's the appropriation that that amount is associated with. And on the budget summary, this is like breaks the expenditure down to the most detail. I can see that I actually spent money out of multiple different budget accounts. And look at my descriptions here. District managed activity, baseball general supplies, I have softball general supplies, and I have tennis general supplies. So I spent 580 on softball and 158 on baseball. So that's where this amount comes from. But then when I'm kind of looking at it, the higher level, the appropriation level, this is just sports supplies. So all of those qualify. So, um, so that's kind of what my reports look like. Um, Again, I can run these from uh, this menu here or uh, the report menu up here, the budget summary is available. Now, I'm sure you can imagine as we've been talking about these expenditure accounts and how they're broken out into the highest level of detail, there can end up being a lot of those. So we did move a version of this budget summary report to this reports menu. So especially when you're running, like if you're running that for like, you know, all accounts, that budget summary report on the menu um, will get much better performance. It'll run quicker. So in any case that you can use that, that is a good, um, that's, you know, recommended to use. Now, of course, like reports, like there is some customization options. There are some different reasons that you might run the template version of the report. Um, and especially if you are running it, like say just for one fund, you can um, still use that version, it's still there. Um, I do wanna look at one thing um, with using this template version that I wanna point out. And let me change this to PDF real quick. Um, 
do this. Let's do it just for our fun that we're talking about here. Okay, so when we go to this last page, um, this, the sort option, the sort options determine like um, how your report total or how your information, like what it, order it's going to be in. But it also can determine the subtotals. So we see this like control break checkbox. And, um, you know, certainly along the way, like, you know, this is a little bit more advanced um, as far as like um, getting into some of these report options. We do have trainings where we do cover this um, kind of more specifically, but I want to mention part of this because it is relevant here. So when you come in here, there are options to kind of drag over and maybe get like summaries or get like a sort or a total by different parts of the account code. And so if you see, like we talked through each of those different parts of the code and, um, you know, how what those may mean and like how that kind of can group the different accounts into um, like together. Now, what I really want to point out here is that look at this, we have function two digit level. So I could add this on here, right? And then I could make this a control break. I'm just gonna uncheck this. Um, and when I run this then, let me make sure I have my, okay. When I run this then, it's going to give me the totals based on the first two digits of the function. So function two digit. Well, what did we see that that corresponds to? The appropriation account is the first two digits of that function is kind of how it rolls up and groups into the appropriation account. So now I have the full detail of my expenditure um, information, but it's kind of grouped together in a way where I can see it just by um, in the 4,500, I think that was like all sports, right? Instead of like specifically baseball, softball, tennis. So because I can do this now on the budget summary, that can kind of help with if I'm looking for certain information on how I'm using my funds or my accounts. So I just want to mention that um, as like a possibility with some of these account summary reports um, and just to hop back over I'm not going to keep running these too much but look I have object one digit level so that is um, like another option um, and that's kind of related to what we saw or even if they wanted to group by like you know a specific like you know function code or something they could and and you know, with this, it doesn't necessarily have to just be in one fund how, you know, we've been looking at things. So, um, and again, just to kind of do this one more time and then we'll, we'll call it down here. If they wanted, let me open this up. If they wanted, they would um, grab this. Let me, let me do it with the one I already did. So the, all I did was grab, drag, and put it at the top here and then check that control break box. And that's how I added that as the primary sort and subtotal. Okay. All right. Um, and then I, so I just kind of have some more information here. Um, I know I've kind of been talking through this. So, uh, you know, knowing that structure can be useful when balancing the figures on the reports. And then, um, so if we, you know, kind of like what we were looking at, if they run the cash summary, and there's a cash account that you know does not have the totals that they expect. It depends on. I would look at what that is then, right? So if the expended amount is different than what they think it should be or what it should be, then they could. So okay, the expended side appropriation is the next level. So then they could run an appropriation account, see where which specific appropriation the account the amount isn't matching, and then they if they needed more detail they could then narrow, narrow it down to an expenditure account using a budget summary. And once you have the expenditure account, you can then use that to look up actual like transactions, actual, you know, what was this actually cut as a check for? And um, so knowing these levels can be really helpful in trying to narrow down, you know, balancing discrepancies or find certain information. 
Uh, the other thing is that the reports pull figures directly from the account pages. So, um, you know, I mentioned this with this report, how we have like month to date received, fiscal to date received. And then when we were looking at the cash account, let me just open one of these here. When we were looking at the cash account, so like a month, I'm sorry, month to date received is this column fiscal to date received is this column. Now, those reports are pulling specifically from these fields. And so sometimes when it comes to a question of like customizing reports, even like what else can you put on the report or like, you know, I want this on the report with that. And even when you're looking at like the list of options that you have to add to reports um, down the line with like customization, it's really helpful to know what is available on these account screens because if you're looking at a report that has that is pulling from the cash account like this is what it's pulling from so um that can be really good to recognize especially when it comes to the reports all right last little section here we are um we're getting there we're almost done the um, budgeting adjustments, I kind of touched on those earlier. Um, first of all, in this uh, presentation, these are links. I'm sorry, I have this kind of like zoomed out so we can see um, decently so it doesn't pop up very well there. But um, the budgeting adjustments, um, I do have links on each one of these to like where you can find more information in our wiki. Um, we kind of saw this earlier. So initial or adjustment amounts on the expenditure and revenue accounts. So let's go back in here. Let's kind of look at this. Um, and actually get on here. So um, you can enter these manually via the account page, or there is an option to add these um, using our budgeting pages. But first, we're going to look at the manual option. So if I come in here, actually, let me go to go to my account. We got our trusty account here. We're going to view this, and then budgeting adjustments is at the top here. So this is where I was looking at my initial amount, and I can see my initial amount is in here. But let's say that we're partway through the year, and you know what? I let, let me look at this account real quick. So I have 5,000. I've only spent uh, 580. I have 350 that I still plan to spend, but like 5,000 was way too much. So why don't we take this down? We want to do a February date because we're looking at this as of February. Let's take this down to like a, let's take this down to like a thousand as what we are going to plan to spend now because we originally had 5,000 in there as like our expectation of like what we had budgeted and available for people to be able to make purchases from. But we're like, that's actually way too much. So um, I can come in here, I can make it a negative amount and I can post this. And then um, let's go back here. And then I think I can just close this and do it. Yeah, okay. Um, or actually maybe it was showing there. I'm sorry, but not <laughs> staring at the computer for a bit. So <laughs> might be losing a little bit, but um, so here's our initial budget. Initial, the initial was still 5,000. We had the carryover of the 250 from the prior year. But then what we did is we said, okay, we want to reduce it. Um, down to 1,000. So these all work together in this calculation so that the actual expendable now is 1,000 plus the carryover encumbered. So it ends up being 1,250 available to spend. Then now here's how much, sorry, I should expand this. Here's how much we've already spent. We're planning another 350. And then even on top of that, we still have 320 that um, is available. So 26% there. So that, that seems a little bit more balanced. Um, 
so if we come back here, um, like I said, there is an option to like mass upload these because obviously like doing this on one account, that was real easy to go in and just enter an adjustment. But if they want to do this on a hundred accounts, you know, they don't have to go in and view and then click and then create and then add. There is a way to do them with like a spreadsheet. Um, and then this kind of just shows how the equation. So again, remember the initial was already there. We updated the adjustments and then ultimately that does update the expendable. And then I've got a little summary in here of like, okay, so when I enter this budget adjustment, what reports am I going to impact? Now the budget um, appropriation. And so I did this on expenditure accounts. So it's going to affect the budget summary and the appropriation summary. And it's going to update the fiscal to date appropriated. So let me go back here. Okay, let me go back here. And um, I just want to, instead of like running a whole report, I just want to show you the report here. So um, this budget summary so here's the account fiscal to date appropriated. It is going to be a total on the actual report. It, um, it shows a little bit different just for this one specific field where it shows 5,000 here. And so now that we entered the adjustment for uh, negative 4,000, it's going to bring this field down to 1,000 on this report. And so it will what the change that we just made will directly impact this field on the budget summary. Um, and then if I I can also do adjustments on a, a revenue account. If I did it on a revenue account, it would affect the fiscal to date receivable on a revenue summary. And then I do also have these budget transactions reports. So uh, let's look at these real quick. Um, budgeting, budget transactions. And let me do this. So to, I believe we just left it be today. So I can run this for a date range. Now I could run this for like my fiscal year or like if I wanted to see my initial amounts, those are usually posted as of 7-1. But since I just entered a budget adjustment, today, and I think I just changed the month, so it should be the 15th, here we go. Um, I ran it for the date range that I knew was dated, was, that I dated this adjustment. And so now I can see, okay, so here's the cash account. Here is the expenditure account that I posted this to. I've got my account description, um, the date here. You know what? I'm so sorry. I need to zoom in on this a little bit, huh? Uh, so again, my cash account, expenditure account in description, and then I can see here, this is the description that I gave my adjustment, and then here's the amount. So, um, you know, if they're going in and they need to, you know, add or reduce their um, expendable figure or what they have appropriated to account, um, this is a good tool for tracking the, those changes that they've made without having to like click in that reaccount. Um, and then there's another one, uh, here, actually, let's go look at this. It's, uh, summarized by appropriation. So I'll include, I'll add this to the PowerPoint because I missed that, um, part when I, um, on this slide, but this is basically the same thing, um, But we talked about, you know, how those appropriations are kind of like a higher level will include like a bigger grouping. And so this one actually has it built in to summarize by the appropriation account. So before I saw this first column was the expenditure account. Now I'm seeing all of the adjustments for the appropriation account instead. Let me do this. Put that in there. Okay, 
And then, um, so transfers advances, um, those also uh, can be used to maintain the accounts. Um, essentially this, when you're looking at the cash account, you know, we have like the expended and the received amounts and the transfers advances basically uses specific account codes to move money um, between funds. And let's go down here. So you use it to transfer money um, from one fund account to another. Um, and a transfer is considered a permanent movement of the money. An advance is expected is expected to be repaid back to the originating fund. Now, uh, there are definitely like certain, you know, rules and parameters as far as how this works that are laid out by AOS, uh, by the auditor of state. And so the districts would generally have like a process that they'd follow. Um, you know, they may get this like approved by the board before they're moving money. Um, but this is essentially like just the mechanism in the system that would allow them to do this when it's appropriate. Um, the transfer transactions do use specific account codes. So we talked a lot about what those functions and objects, like how those define like you know, what the money is used for or like, um, you know, what it's spent on or that sort of thing. Obviously, like a, tr a transfer or an advance is different. They're not actually like receiving money from taxes or fees and they're not actually spending money outside of the system. So there are certain codes that are laid out here Um that are specifically determined to be used for when they're doing a transfer or an advance. Um, let me hop over here to our use test manual real quick. And again, I told you, I like to just do this control find and throw the number in there. And then um, I make sure, okay, we're on functions, but you can see these um, for like advancing out money from one fund. Uh, these are the specific function codes that are set aside to be used for that. This is in our um, documentation as well, uh, what these codes are. Um, and then transfers. So uh, the transfers also have specific codes. And essentially what happens is a transfer or an advance, it goes out of one account. So it's kind of like it, it's not really spending, but it's like, you know, an expense out of an account and then receiving it into an account. So um, the transfer, when it's going into an account, it's being added to the received amount. It will increase the cash amount, the cash account received, which remember it's initial plus the received. So that's also increasing the fund balance. A transfer or advance from an account, it's going to be added to the expended amount. So that's going to increase the expenses, which are subtracted from the fund balance. So that fund balance is going to go down because they want to take it from this fund and send it somewhere else. Um, and then here are the reports. So the cash summary will be impacted by a transfer advance, um, the expended and or the received amounts. Now, Overall, like the grand total wouldn't actually change there because there's moving it between one cash account to another, but the individual cash accounts would change. Um, so it impacts all of the um, account summary reports. And then there are uh, transfer uh, reports that we have as well, which let's go actually, let's go look at the transfer advance situation here. So this is on the transaction menu, transfers advances. And um, if I come in here, I can create uh, a new transfer or advance. And the type I select here. So I can either, I just by selecting, you know, whichever. Um, so say I want to do a transfer. I just leave this checked. I can determine the amount, the date. Then I can give it a description. And what's interesting here, so if I look at, so the debit account, um, when I look at this, 
this is going to be um, which account it's coming from, right? Which account's being debited from. So if you look at these account code structures, you can see these are the expenditure accounts because I can tell, look, I can tell it has um, all of the different, like based on the structure, based on all of the different pieces of the code that's in there um, because the revenue accounts are much shorter, right? So um, if I'm on here, I can pick, um, you know, which fund special cost center I want this to come from. And because this requires very specific functions and objects, our software is actually smart enough to know that. So when I look at this list, the only options I can pick are accounts that actually match that correct function and object code for what I'm trying to enter into this field. Because if I, a different kind of like function and object code combination wouldn't be correct for a transfer. So the system kind of knows and helps out with what specific account it should be. Um, and then um, if, if it's not in here, then they might need to create that account. Uh, they might need to go back to the accounts and then use that create option to add one with the proper uh, function and object code. So I'm just gonna pick a random one here credit account. So this is where we're moving it to. We can tell by this structure, here's the receipt codes. And um, I can select any one of these. Again, same thing. It's only going to show me the accounts that qualify for transfers. Um, if I choose advance, then it will switch and it will know that uh, the advance, you know, which specific account codes should be used for an advance. And then uh, let me save this up. I hope, yeah, I think I picked the accounts right. And then um, I'm just getting like a little warning for the balances, but that would go ahead and um, enter that transfer in. So, um, okay, so then we have the reports. Go back to my home page here. And I have two different kinds of reports for this. Um, I have a transfer advance summary. And um, this is gonna run as of the current period. So I'm just gonna leave it here. Let's generate this, take a look. So this is just going to give us like by the fund and the special cost center, right? So by like, the cash account essentially, it'll show us, okay, here's the transfers in, here's the transfers out, advances in, advances out. So that's kind of like your totals. So you can see how those funds were uh, moved around essentially. And then the transfer advance activity, this is the one that actually shows us like if we put in a start and stop date, it's actually gonna show us like the individual uh, transfers that were entered. So um, just for the sake of our example, I'm just gonna enter in the date that we used for our transfer that we just entered. And you can see here, um, it gives uh, the cash accounts that we picked to move those funds between. And then it shows like here, this was the received, this was added to the received amount. And then this was added to the expended amount. Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> and then that was added to the expended amount. Okay. And then last but not least, we have the distributions and error corrections. So this can be used to redistribute expenditures or correct an error in a previous expense. And um, if you um, do happen to be familiar with the classic system at all, this used to be called ActMod. Um, but this is basically uh, gives you an option to kind of move around um, between like some of those uh, like expenditure accounts or revenue accounts, like where the expended amount shows um, to be able to correct that without having to like fully redo like a check or something like that. Um, if it's just for like how it's reflecting on the accounts essentially. So uh, let's go back here. Okay. So allows you to redistribute expenditures if they're charged, you know, on maybe more accounts than the purchase order was originally for, or to correct an error in a previous expense. And um, if we go in, this is also on our transaction menu. 
and distribution error correction. And let's just go ahead. We're going to just jump right into creating one of these. So um, again, let me give this a date. And so um, what we have here, date description, a lot of these fields are blanked out. And that's why, like, you know, um, if you see some of these that are older from like the previous classic system, they used to have like a check or receipt number, purchase order number associated with them, which they no longer do. So these fields are here kind of as like a reference for old transactions. But when you create new ones, you don't have to worry about um, these different legacy fields in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple line items um, so that we can work with. And what we're going to do is um, just going to go ahead and put like simple description in here um, just to give us something. But what we will, what we want to do, all right, so the goal is that these total items always has to equal zero because this transaction, it's not adding any money to the soft, to the system, to the accounts. What you're doing is you're just moving. It's a correction, right? So if I accidentally charge something over here, but I want it to be charged over here, like I accidentally had cut that check and had it linked to the softball account, um, but it actually should have been tennis. So what I can do is I can put in, okay, here's um, the amount on this account. And then I'm going to do a negative for the same amount. So um, let's do this. Let me do. Mm, let's see. So I think, you know what, I, I know we're kind of at the end here, so I'm just going to. Actually, I want to do, I want to, I want to be able to show us. So hang on, let's do this right. Let's do this right. Sorry. So let's go up. Let me grab this account code real quick. So let's do tennis. So tennis is four, five, four, six for the function. That's really all I needed. Okay. There we go. So here's our here's our account. So this is our account for tennis. Let me open this up a little bit more. So here's our account for tennis. So what we're going to do, and we're moving expend, expenditures. So we're going to move 100 to that account. And we're going to do here's our softball account. OK, so we can enter this in here. And then let's save this up. And it, it's automatically assigns the number here. So this is moving, um, this is updating our um, distributions for those accounts. And then let me go back to my accounts. And I always second guess myself. So I'm hoping that I put those positive negatives in the right order. So we'll see. Okie dokie. So here is our 4534. So let's take a look at this. Yep. Okay. So actual expense. So previously we had said that we spent 550 out of this account, but now it's 450. So let's go look at the tennis account, which is this next one here. And look, now it shows that we expended or we spent $100. So I didn't have to go through and like redo an expenditure process. I didn't have to go through and like make another check or change a check or void anything, but I was able to use that error correction to actually just kind of move around like where I have the money tracked that I spent it for. So um, that can be handy. It definitely depends on the situation as far as like when you use that versus actually needing to um, like, you know, recut a check if there is something where it needs to be spent to a different vendor or something like that. But if it's just a matter of kind of adjusting where those expenses show on your books, like to which account, then um, that, again, that's the distributions error corrections on this transaction menu. So that could be very helpful. 
And uh, let's see, uh, I believe I have the um, reports listed out here. Um, oh, so note is by default, the system doesn't allow budget and revenue corrections in the same transaction. So I can add more items. Like I just did a very simple one where it was like 100 from here goes to 100 from here uh, to here. But you could split it out into mul have multiple accounts on those error corrections just as long as the overall total equals zero. But you can't mix revenue accounts and budget accounts on the same one. Um, and then the reports. So we saw this affected the actual expended, which means it will affect the actual expended amount on the budget and appropriation reports, and then also on the cash summary. Um, in this case, we did an expenditure, so it it changes the expended on the cash summary. And then there is an error corrections and supplies dis distributions report that would give you like a summary of those entered again by like a specific date range, uh, kind of like the same way that we saw how the budget transactions and the um, transfer activity kind of listed out what we just did. All right. Okay. So I know that's a lot. Um, again, we're recording all of this so that if you do need to go back, um, this uh, PowerPoint will be posted out there. I put a lot of detail on like um, the different fields and stuff that we talked about. Um, and again, like the links with the resources in there. Um, but yeah, I hope that this was helpful in getting a better understanding kind of of those codes how they're used, and then like also what the totals mean. I think um, it definitely does take time as far as like learning these because, you know, obviously like once you start seeing them more and they have sort of like, you know, um, meaning like I said, like there's some that you can kind of recognize as like a salary account once you know that object code. And um, so it can be kind of like helpful to learn as you go, but obviously it's, you know, not going to be all at once, <laughs> but I do hope that this helps give you like a good jump start into kind of understanding not only what the accounts mean, how they're structured, but, um, you know, also like how you can, how these different pieces in the software can be used to manage the amounts within them. So uh, that is all I have for day one. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with me. I know this was, um, you know, longer than just the hour and a half session, but um, yeah, that is all I have. Do we have any questions? Um, please feel free to put them in the chat or, you know, always let us know, um, you know, even if you think about something and putting a ticket later, um, we can help you out. But yeah. All right. Well, um, we'll be back tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. with the expenditure process. So we hope to see you then and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.